this party and these girls looking at me. Skinny jeans on, he ain't on my head now. Hey, 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 okay, okay. I want y'all to do this dance now. Just on that beat, just on that beat, just on that, just on that, just on that beat. Now slide, chop, hit the phone, don't stop. Hey, don't stop. Hey, don't stop. Hey, run a man on that beat. Welcome to the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zono's little juju on the beat early in the morning. How you guys like that? Well, Saturday, Saturday, whoa, Nelly, in my Keith Jackson voice, if you do know him, the longtime ABC broadcaster. If you slept on Saturday, I hope you had a sweet dream and a beautiful nightmare. The game of the weekend, Tennessee versus Texas A&M, double O-T, O-T. I think that was the best game that came on TV all weekend. I mean, it was a 48-38 game. Texas A&M ends up winning in double overtime, but they had to struggle to get there. Um, sloppy good game. There was 10 turnovers, 7 by the balls, 3 by Texas A&M. You turn the ball over 7 times, you make it hard on yourself to win. And to only lose by 7 points and turn the ball over 7 times, what does that say? Now, also, I looked at the fact this game... It was back and forth. There were a lot of penalties that I think weren't called by Texas A&M for a lot of the big hits. However, they did bring a lot of wood. The the, the kid Gillespie, the, the 12th man wearing the number 12, on the kickoff hits the guy square in the face and knocks him out. Uh, there was a lot of heavy hitting in this game. Tennessee came out with a lot of injuries. Uh, Denny O'Brien was carried off on a stretcher. He was actually released from the team, I want to say yesterday, on Monday. Um, Josh Dobbs... He had, a, he had an okay game, threw that pick at the end there, which helped Texas A&M clinch the game. Trevor Knight played okay. Uh, they each had uh, 400, well, Dobbs had 400 yards, Trevor Knight had 250, and they both had two picks, so they didn't play great, uh, but they played okay. Texas A&M obviously outlasted Tennessee because, as we saw, that game was going to go back and forth all day until someone took it. So uh, congrats to Texas A&M for taking that game. The things that we know now about both teams, uh, Tennessee, they're actually good. Tennessee's got to learn to play an entire game and not chop everything up into bad first half, good second half, because when you play teams down the stretch here like Alabama, as well as if they do go to the SEC Championship being having to play Alabama or LSU, um, I really think that they've got to be able to show they can play a full game of football because against the best teams in the country, you cannot get away with that, Tennessee. Um, also, Alvin Kamara, he's a pro. The guy had about 160 through the air, 120 on the ground. Jalen Hurd was out this week with the, with the injury, the lower extremity injury. But Alvin Kamara, he's very smooth, like peanut butter and jam. I watched him catch the ball at the backfield at awkward angles, didn't bobble, was calm under pressure. He dropped a punt early in that game. Fumbles it around, falls right on it. He's got a lot of veteran savvy and veteran spark um, and, and calm and wherewithal to keep that Team Tennessee uh, okay and, and less tense in those pressure pack situations. So Alvin Kamara, he's a pro from what I see. Um, also, Texas A&M, it's still Texas A&M football. Yes, they're undefeated. Yes, they've won six games. Yes, they have Alabama coming to the house next week. However... Um, they've got to play better defense. They're still giving up a lot of points. Um, and I say that because you give up 21 in the fourth. That's stuff they did the last few years under Sumlin, okay? They tried to outscore you, and they have the Johnny football basketball on grass. They've got to tighten that segment up. Also, speaking of Alabama, both teams do a wait playing Alabama. Tennessee's got Bama next week. Alabama's got to play Texas A&M next week. They actually are the monster in the closet. Everybody in the SEC's beware of. Um, now, they beat Arkansas 49-30, to Bama did, on Saturday. Decent game. I'd say it was a glorified scrimmage. I mean, they, that game was way out of reach, way out of hand. Before anything ever happened, before anything was final, Alabama jumped on them like a I, I don't know, like there was no, like it was nobody's business. Mika Fitzpatrick, he's a great DB. Had the three inter, three interceptions. Uh, ball so hard, you can't find him. Mika Fitzpatrick, I watched him do that against Texas A&M last year, catch the three interceptions. And he's somebody back there on that back end that I think has given Alabama a lot more security on defense, knowing that even if they're going to give up 
a few more points than they'd like, maybe against the run um, or possibly even through the air. They've got a stout safety in the back to back them up who can get that ball, flip the field. They can score on defense this year. We've seen that with Alabama. A lot of their points, two or three touchdowns during games, are coming on defense. So teams have to limit limit turning the ball over against Alabama. However, if they do turn the ball over, they've got to simply make tackles and not give up easy points on defense. Um, now, Arkansas, they're no slouch, uh, but Austin Allen had 400 yards, three, three interceptions, three TDs, didn't play great. Um, but, I mean, honestly, I said they're no slouch, but thinking about it, I mean, they're probably a slouch. <laughs> uh, because... They've already gotten trounced by Texas A&M in Dallas, and then they just had this game against Alabama where they got busted early. So I think I'll have to go ahead and switch my opinion on that. They are a slouch. Uh, my apologies. Now, also, there was another big game over the weekend. FSU-Miami, 20-19. That was a really nice game. Classic battle on South Beach. Felicia's son couldn't get it done. Brad Kaya, son of Felicia from Friday. Uh, Brad Kaya, two TDs, one pick. Uh, DeAndre Francois, he had two TDs late. He had to leave early in the game. He got knocked around like Black Friday shopping. Uh, big Demarcus Walker with the extra point block. That was a big play in the game to win it for Florida State. Number 44, Demarcus Walker, great linebacker for Florida State. He was able to get a hand up and get that done. But I, I would say Florida State, they're done in the division. They're in the same division as Louisville and Florida and Clemson. They've already lost to Louisville. They've got two losses in the division. That one to North Carolina hurt. However, they do get to play Clemson on Halloween. And I mentioned before, there might be some haunted house magic in FSU. Now, Clemson, uh, they've still got to go there. They, if they win that, if they lose that game, they st they'll still have one loss, but they'll hold the tiebreaker over Louisville in the division to go to the ACC championship. Other games over the weekend, Charlie Seat got hotter because uh, Texas lost to OU 40-45. Uh, Charlie, mm, don't know where you're going to be next year, sir, but if you go anywhere, Tom Herman may be leaving Houston, so just something to look at. Uh, now, also, speaking of Houston, Houston finally takes the L to Navy. Uh, now, this is good and bad because it hurts Louisville, and this helps Washington. Washington had that 70-piece that they dropped on Oregon. Louisville needed Houston to be undefeated when they got to them in November, November 17th to be exact. So that game is automatically devalued for Louisville. It drops their strength of schedule simply because they had that loss to Navy. Uh, so that, that that's, that's an interesting scenario right there for Louisville and Houston. Uh, Houston's essentially eliminated themselves from the college football playoff. Stanford, they're done as well. They get busted by Washington State, 42-16. to I mean, bye-bye Heisman, Christian McCaffrey. That team that they've got at Stanford this year is just not the team that we've seen in the past. It's not the Kevin Hogan. It's not the Andrew Luck-led teams. This is a regular Stanford team it's starting to look like. Uh, so to be number 15 in the country and lose like that at home, not very good. Also, Michigan buries Rutgers. Uh, I feel like that, that's a that's a fitting term, considering that we have Halloween coming up soon. They bury them 78-0. to Also, LSU and Florida, y'all got to play. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they need to figure that out. That game was postponed due to Hurricane Matthew, but that's a big, crucial game in the SEC for other teams in that conference. And it would be very sad if Florida found a way to sneak into the SEC championship over a Tennessee or a Georgia just because they didn't play a game. So that wouldn't be very fair, now would it, Gators? Okay, now also, moving right over to the NFL, guess who's back? Back again. Brady's back. Tell a friend. Tom Brady comes back, and all he did was throw for 400 yards. I mean, in three TDs. Jeez, Tom. I mean, Alexa, tell Brady to chill out. Shout out to Amazon. Um, now, I will tell you this. Martellus Bennett, he's a Ferrari that Tom Brady has not driven. Martellus Bennett had the two TDs. He's a good player for them. Now, he's had Gronkowski for a while. However, I think it'll open up that Patriots offense to have somebody like Martellus Bennett and a Gronkowski where you can put them both in two tight end sets and they're both out there running patterns. Two bigger receivers against those DBs who can outrun linebackers. I really like that matchup for the Patriots. 
they should have a pretty good year this year, and especially since Mr. Brady's back. I knew he was going to ball out when I saw him walking around before the game, pregame, looking around, taking it in, taking in the ambiance, the entertainment. I like that, Mr. Brady. I knew you'd play well. Now, also, the Falcons, they go down and they get real dirty, dirty birdish on the Denver Broncos. They win that 23-16. Uh, all eyes were on Julio, but wait a second. I mean, I call it the practice Freeman and Coleman. They did what they were supposed to do through the air as well as on the ground. They've got a great two-headed running attack. In the last four years, Atlanta's done a great job of acquiring Dante, Dante, uh, excuse me, Devontae Freeman as well as um, Tevin Coleman from Indiana. Those two running backs have given them stability in the offense and have allowed Matt Ryan to be the Matt Ryan that we've seen in the past that came out of Boston College almost 10 years ago. Um, now... Uh, he also had, Matt Ryan had no picks, so he's he's doing pretty well. Uh, Paxton Lynch, he struggled, had the 200 yards, and had a TD pick. Uh, he's got to play better. Denver, please fix it. Fix it while it's, while it's still fixable. Um, you could call Bob the Builder. They've got to figure out a way to get this offense running. They had three field goals by Brandon uh, McManus. That's good for fantasy points, but that's not going to win you games in the National Football League. You all know that, Denver. And, yes, your defense is good. But they only gave up 23 points. I mean, that's not great in the NFL, but it's not terrible, like 30 or 40. Uh, so, I mean, that offense has got to score some points. They can't just get away with the 16 and 15, 17-point wins this year. I think they'll have to figure out a way to score at least three touchdowns a game this year. Um, also, the Bengals played the Cowboys. Cowboys lose at 20, oh, excuse me, Cowboys win that. Bears, excuse me, Bengals lose 28 to 14. Now, the Cowboys, they're playing outstanding right now. How about them, Cowboys? Dad got the juice, Zeke got the feet, Tony's got the headset. Now, Tony, I think he may keep the headset for a while. I don't see why you would take Tony and throw him in the lineup. I don't care about the chemistry with Des Bryant. I don't care about the chemistry with other receivers, Cole Beasley or Jason Witten. I'm caring about right now, the present. This league is a right now league. We hear commentators talk about that all the time. This league is for right now. Right now, Dak Prescott is hot. Don't mess it up, Dallas. Jerry, swallow your ego. Tony's been a great employee, but sometimes the rookie's always better. Um, and not always. It's rare. But sometimes the rookie's just always better. He's been better as far as throwing the ball, holding on to the ball. He's been better with... His feet scoring on the ground, Dak Prescott. So, Jerry, don't make that decision hard for yourself, sir. Stick with Dak Prescott. Um, also, other games over the weekend. Eagles finally lose to the Lions. Carson Wentz goes deep at the end of the game, loses it, but I like his heart. Also, the Vikings still rolling over the Bossweiler in Houston, a.k.a. it's Mr. Stilia Check. Brock Osweiler is not that good, and now it's starting to show. Also, the Giants lose, but Odell keeps his cool against Green Bay. He had an okay game. I think he was more so concerned with showing people that he can just go out, play a football game, and not get into any extracurriculars, which he was able to do. So I can respect that, Odell. No shade at all for me. Um, in baseball, MLB playoffs are currently going on right now. Blue Jays got the brooms out against the Rangers. Um, they swept those guys. Josh Donaldson, Encarnacion, as well as Jose Bautista, Joey Bats. That's a tough, tough, tough lineup. That's a nice trio that I think can hit them to the World Series, maybe even win it for the Blue Jays in Toronto. Uh, they're my Dark Horse World Series champ. Now, the Nationals also jumped on the Dodgers on the road. Now they're up 2-1 in the ALDS. Um, and the Cubs are up 2-1. They lost last night in extras. To the Giants. Now, do we believe in that Giants even year theory? Or do we believe in the Cubbies curse? Because if that even year theory is true about the Giants, then that curse must be true about the Cubs. We'll have to see. Now, also, the Red Sox, they get swept like cheap food by the Indians. Uh, Big Poppy's last game, I remember in 04, as a slim-chinned, haired freshman, um... I remember when Big Poppy did what he did against the Yankees, down 3-1. I remember that. And, you know, it, it's 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 sad to see Big Poppy go because he put so much into the game. And he's got so much swag about him with the bat. And I really liked, you know, seeing his different chains dangle and the, the new haircuts, the clutch hits. 
Big Poppy will be missed. I'm sure the Red Sox organization will miss him. Uh, but great career, Big Poppy. Great career, sir. Big Poppy for life! <laughs> great career. Great career. Um, now, next show, we'll discuss our big weekend of sports. What's going on in the sports world? As you all know, this is a man sports fantasy the next few months. A lot of stuff coming up. We'll have NBA, college basketball, college football, and NFL at the same time here shortly. And everybody knows that's every man's early Christmas gift. Seeing all four of those at once? Oh, wow. Thank you so much for watching the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zono's.